Ten. Stand by the Tick Studio. Seven. Six. Stand by camera one, mice one and two. Three. Two. One. Tick Studio. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Dylan Weiss. And I'm Aiden Chorney. On today's show, every, Avery Pelche went down to the local ice hut. Haley Sweet went down to our local thrift shop. Um, Ella Boston it brings us to the art class. And Julian Andrew shows us Skills Alberta Video Production Competition. But first, here's our, first, our top story. ISC, is, or Individual Studies class, is a facility where students have the opportunity to teach themselves subjects individually through module work. Reporter Avery, Pel uh, oh, reporter Avery Thompson brings us this report. Here at MCHS, we offer all of the typical classes, biology, math, and so on. But sometimes, students want to learn about subjects not offered in a classroom. And in that case, we have Independent Studies class, or ISC. Uh, ISC is a place where students can go to uh, learn independently. I think ISC is important because it gives students who uh, maybe need some extra credits a space that they can go and kind of work through some courses that aren't offered in the everyday classroom. So right now I'm marking psychology courses. I've got two different psychology courses. Forensics is offered during ISC. Different classes that might benefit particular fields of study that you're interested in later in life. In ISC you have to be self-motivated because nobody is really going to be prodding you and nagging you to get the work done. Uh, if you don't get it done it affects you. So it's, uh, it's an interesting place for students who are really self-motivated to go and to see you know, how they work on their own. Whether it's psychology, forensics, or catching up on some other classes, ISC is a quiet and beneficial learning environment. Located in room 103, it's a great class to take for extra credits special interest classes, or just because you want to learn about something. From CTV News, Avery Thompson reporting. With only a month left in spring until we transition into the summer, we are already seeing hotter temperatures than last year, uh, than last spring, and we are wondering if the temperatures will be staying the same or if it will start to cool off entering summer. To bring us insight is MCTV's very own in-studio meteorologist, Julian Andrews. Thanks, Aiden. Let's take a look at our national forecast. So looking out to the west, Vancouver has a high of 17 with all sun. Whitehorse has a high of 12 with partly cloudy. Regina has a high of 21, partly cloudy. And Yellowknife has a high of 12 with less cloudy. Winnipeg as well has a high of 22 with partly cloudy. Now on this side, out at the east, Toronto has a high of 14, mostly sunny. Montreal has a high of 14, partly cloudy. Uh, Iqaluit has a high of 1 with all clouds, Halifax is a high of 11 with clouds, and St. John's is partly cloudy with a high of 10. Let's take a look at the provincial forecast. Provincially, it looks like, looks like we can expect some sh uh, thunder showers and some clouds. So up north, high level has a high of 18, partly cloudy, Fort McMurray has a high of 14, all cloud, Grand Prairie has a high of 13, partly cloudy, Edmonton as well, partly cloudy with a high of 14, Red Deer, a high of 13, all clouds. Calgary, a high of 13, all, uh, partly cloudy. Medicine Hat, partly cloudy with a high of 19. And then looking at Jasper and Banff, Jasper has a high of 14 and Banff has a high of 12. Both thunder showers with Banff having a little bit of sun. Let's take a look at our current conditions. Currently, we're looking at a high of 16 degrees Celsius, mostly cloudy. The wind is 11 kilometers an hour north. The relative humidity is 56%. The sunrise was at 5.17 a.m. and the sunset was at 9.45 p.m. Let's take a look at the week's forecast. Looking like a pretty sunny week here, Friday has a high of 22 with all sun. Saturday has a high of 25 with partly sun, partly cloudy as well. Uh, Sunday has a high of 25, partly cloudy. Monday a high of 24, all sun. Tuesday a high of 21, all sun. Wednesday, a high of 23, partly cloudy, and Thursday is finishing off our week with sun, high of 25, and a low of 13 degrees. Back to you, Aiden. Thanks, Julian. Recently, Avery Peltier went down to Mournville's very own ice cream shop to get a scoop on how they run the ice hut, as well as what customers think about the establishment and what their delicious treats have to offer. Oh, no. 
This May, Alberta has reached a number of record highs temperature-wise. If you scream for ice cream and you're looking to beat the heat, local business The Ice Hut is the place for you. The Ice Hut has been a summertime staple in Mournville for years and has seen only more success after its 2021 revamp and location change. This would be the second summer that I own it. We bought it at the end of the season, uh, that season, that year, and then we moved it over to this facility and built all of this. So this is all us. I like uh, owning something that's in a small community. I get to see faces that I know and new faces all the time. So for me, that's really important just uh, in the sense that I believe in community. I've sat on lots of different boards here in Mournville and just believe in giving back wherever I can. Dawn Mackestocker sees operating her business as an important opportunity to provide teenagers with work experience. And it's clear that running the ice hut is an enjoyable endeavor for all those involved. Depends what time I'm working, but just yeah. show up clean, do my job, serve as many people as I can, have fun with it. We goof around, we have fun. Like, we have to do our jobs, but it, sometimes it doesn't even feel like a job. We're just laughing. No, exactly. Like, yeah. when I work with this weirdo. <laughs> and, of course, the customers love it, too. I got bubble gum and moon mist. And I got uh, bubble gum and wet paint. Yeah, and it's delicious. I have root beer float. I'm and I mean it's um, dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs> Shark attack. Uh-uh. Dinosaur. Okay. He's not going to cooperate. I have a uh, blast off and cookie dough. And I have cream soda float. I got strawberry and cookie dough. I got I got cookie dough and red velvet. Schmecky. Schmecky. So schmecky. <laughs> I got chocolate <laughs> peanut butter and cookie like an yeast. And my son oh, has right. cookies and cream. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that at the ice hut, Fun comes in many flavors. Be sure to check out their Facebook and Instagram pages for more information and consider paying this small business a visit the next time you're walking along Mournville's Main Street. For MCTV News, I'm Avery Pelche reporting. Here are your school announcements for Thursday, May 20, the 25th. If you are a student interested in summer work experience program, Please ensure that you return your program permission slip to Mr. L Mr. Lassard or directly through the office, in order to be registered at least. Track and field practices are ongoing with oof, interested senior high school students. Monday and Wednesday practices are for sprinters and distance athletes, when Tuesdays and Thursdays are for shot put, discus, and javelin training. See Mr. Lassard for more information. As a reminder for Howells, the library is a quiet working space, and if you're interested for just chit-chatting with your friends, please sign up for the CTS Commons area. MCHS will be hosting its color wars between the grades on June 1st. Grade 9s will be green, grade 10s will be red, grade 11s will be yellow and orange, and grade 12s will be blue. The grade with the highest percentage of their colored shirts will be getting a dilly bard and a hot dog lunch. For these and all other school informations, keep connected by listening to the daily school announcements, logging onto the school website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, or by following the school on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching MCTV Morinville. Reporter Haley Sweet went downtown to the Fusion Thrift Shop to see how the thrift shop is ran and what the thrift shop has to offer to the people in our town. Living in a small town, there isn't many shops to go to. We're lucky to have a thrift shop with great prices and people who care about others. Great deals, <laughs> hopefully, providing people what they need, but also we have a lot of partnerships with other community groups where we either share goods or resources. Uh, look, we felt that the community of Morinville could use a big clothing outlet uh, where people could resource things so that they didn't have to drive to the city. The goal is to serve people, so that is the community as well as beyond our community of Warrenville. Uh, when there's crises, people can come here and get whatever they need for free. Thrift shops run off of donated items. While some items are more in need than others, everything they get is always appreciated and accepted. We probably have the least amount of men's clothes. We would love to have more men's clothes, probably youth 16 and up. We get lots of ladies' clothes, lots of kids' clothes. Any, any donation is always so welcome. We're most in need of men's clothing and footwear, and also like older kids' youth age group clothing. 
There's many ways to get involved. Either it be donating old clothes, volunteering your time, or just spreading a good word about the shop. Volunteering is always really wonderful. We need lots of help on any given day. We are welcoming volunteers anytime. Uh, we are 90% run by volunteers, and so if you would like to come and be part of the team, you can just come in the store, fill out an application, and we give you a call and go from there. Pop comments come to me, and uh, I will uh, train them. I do. Thrift shops are a great way to give back and help the community. Reporting for MCTV News, Haley Sweet. Welcome back. Here with our recent sports league updates, including the NHL and the MLB, here's our very own in-studio sports reporter, William Campo. Thanks, Aiden. In the NHL last night, Florida's incredible playoff run continued with a 4-3 victory over the Carolina. They take the conference, conference final series four games to zero, in a large part due to Matthew Kachuk's, Matthew Kachuk, who scored the winning goal with only 4.5 seconds left on the clock. With the win, the Panthers advanced to the Scan Stanley Cup Finals against either the Vegas Golden Knights or the Dallas Stars. In the MLB, the Toronto Blue Jays suffered a defeat against the Tampa Bay Rays with a final score of 3-7. The San Diego Padres lost to the Washington Nationals 3-5. The LA Dodgers lost to the Braves 4-3. The Marlins beat the Rockies 10-2 and Milwaukee gave Houston no runs, winning 4-0. Up next, art class is a largely adored option course here at MCHS. Kids enjoy the creative outlet at school and the welcoming environment that has attracted many students to the program over the years. In art, students are able to experiment with a variety of art styles and mediums. Reporter Ella Boisneau takes us into the art room for more information about the class. MCHS has had an art program ever since the doors first opened in 1994. Since then, the art students have been expressing themselves and their talents with the guidance of our art teachers throughout the years. I have been at MCHS since 2002, so minus two maternity leaves, so about 20 years. Um, I've done it every year since elementary, which is about eight years by now. So around six years now, including high school art, where I was able to do at a more of a professional standard. Art may be relaxing, but students are still expected to meet the requirements for the course. This includes handing in and completing your monthly sketchbook assignments. These usually are assigned to help with skills such as color values, contrast, movement, rhythm, pattern, etc. As well as the main projects given and chosen by Mrs. Rochopo which can range from all mediums of all types. Grade 9 and 10, it's a little bit more structured, but then 20 and 30, you can allow students to find where their strengths lie, and then they can kind of go in that direction. So that's what I appreciate, is see where students can push themselves and, and see where their, where their talents are, are lying and where their imagination is, is going to go. So that's really cool. I really like anything with clay because I get to form it exactly how I want it and it's, I feel like it's really personalized. I really like the historical recreation project that we got to do. It was something that we were able to just kind of like expand upon and put into our own little art style and it's really fun to do something like that. I really like watercolor. I've been really into that lately. Students are encouraged to expand and skill build in many different ways as their creativity flourishes. I feel like it's a really relaxing class to take and I feel like it's a good way for me to express myself and my interests through my art. My favorite part of the art program at MCHS is the way Ms. Rochoko teaches it. She teaches it in a really like easy to understand way and I like all the variety of the projects. I think my favorite part about the art room itself and just being at art is going to be Ms. Rochoko. She's really fun to be around and she really helps students. It's my home away from home, this environment. It's, it's organized chaos. It always seems messy to me, but I know where things are, and students just know, too, they kind of get over. Like, once they come in here and figure things out, it's like everybody just comes in and does what they do. The MCHS Art Program is a community of people who love what they do and are invested within their work. Their spirit keeps our school thriving in its creativity. And with that, this is Ella Boisno reporting for MCTV News. Welcome back. With the 2023 track and field season starting to pick up, we here at MCTV News are wanting to bring insight towards how the season has been going so far at MCHS. To share his wisdom and greatness is MCHS's very own Mr. Kent Lassard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Dylan. For those who are not involved, how extensive is the track and field program here at MCHS? Well, 
it's uh, we do run practice every day of the week, but uh, usually we have two days a week. Is about what we we're looking for for athletes to come out. Obviously, if they want to reach that next level, they should maybe be practicing more than that. But uh, uh, we know that people have other things going on, so we just try and prepare them the best that we can for the zone and provincial meet. Thank you. Uh, how hard do athletes prepare for their events ahead of their competitions? Depends on the person and what time, kind of time commitment they can get, but uh, we do expect that they make practices at least once a week so that they can, uh, you know, they, have, they put something into it to get that day off of school and go and compete. But uh, yeah, like if they can get two practices a weekend where we feel like they're, they're going to be adequate, uh, you know, sufficiently prepared for the competition. Makes sense. I understand this has been a very busy week for you for track in the school. Could you quickly share with our viewers what events took place? Well, we've, uh, I'll give you a kind of breakdown of the last couple of weeks. We've had the junior high track meet at MCHS. We've had the North Central Zone track meet at Footfield. Then we had the elementary track, track meet at MCHS. And then we had the provincial track meet again at Footfield. So there's been four track meets in the last two weeks. So it's uh, been a busy time. Thank you. Uh, MCHS has had a long standing of excellence uh, in track and field. How well has the team performed this year? Well, this has got to be one of our best years. We've had uh, some outstanding results. We had a first place overall champion in the triple jump, junior boys triple jump. That was Tyler Sharman. So I think that's only our second provincial champion we've ever had at MCHS. So that's quite an accomplishment for him. And then we had a bronze medal in the pentathlon for Ava Martiniak which is a, she's a grade 10 girl, so that's an, uh, you know, an awesome uh, opportunity for her to continue to strive for excellence there. And we had a fourth place finish and a fifth place finish by Haley Van Brabant at Provincial. She got fourth in the 100 meters and she's competing. You gotta remember these kids are competing against all the best students in, all the best athletes in Alberta. So for them to come in the top eight even is an impressive feat. And Aiden uh, Arcan got uh, fifth in the javelin. So very, very good year here as far as results go. We're very ha happy with it. Thank you. Uh, you're obviously very invested with the track and field program here at MCHS. What's your favorite part of being involved? Well, I just think the best part is watching the kids uh, kind of reach personal best. Like, so when you, a kid comes out and they, you know, do an event and they're, they're do, you know, their their first throws or their first jumps or their first runs aren't as you know, maybe as good as they could be. And after practicing and after working at it, you see that development and that improvement. That's kind of the best part of it. And seeing they're happy, like how happy they are when they do reach those goals. So that's, that's the best part. For any viewers at home who might be interested in joining track and field next year, how might somebody get involved? Well, it's easy to get involved. You just come to a sign-up meeting and start practicing. We usually have our first meeting after spring break. And if you want to start earlier, you come and see me and we'll see what we can work. But uh, we would really like to see more kids out. And we have an opportunity here at MCHS to maybe go for a provincial banner, not just a zone banner, but we need more kids out. So we would have to get 40, 45 kids going to zones uh, so that we can maybe make that next step and contend for a provincial banner. We were fifth overall this year in all, in, out of all the three A schools. And the school that won it was about 300 points ahead of us. So we would really have to bring out some more athletes and continue to have s some good success like we had this year. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, coming up next, reporter Jillian Andrews dug deep into the Skills Alberta video production competition to, to give insight to what takes place behind the competition of creation. On May 3rd and 4th, the Edmonton Expo Centre hosted the 2023 Skills Alberta Provincial Competition, and MCHS sent many talented students to compete here today. That includes our very own Ella Boisno and Brielle Windsor from MCTV News, who are competing in the video production for a chance at nationals. I'm here today to give you a larger look at what it takes to compete at Skills, and how the video production competition differs from the other ones in the building. I think video production is such an important skill nowadays. I mean, with the advent of social media and just how we communicate in general in the world, knowing how to properly frame a shot, get good audio like what you're doing here is so key. And you can use that in so many different um, industries, not just broadcasts or communications or anything like that. It's all over. 
you guys are the people that are having some of the biggest job opportunities opening up. Now the traditional sense of what video production was for the news is changing, and so even as competitors here, you have to think about how the market's shifting and how the industry's shifting, because filmmaking and content creation and video production is not going away. It's just evolving and changing to the needs of the society. For the video production competition, students are given a scope that includes every aspect that they will be judged on. Competitors must be aware of their time management skills as they try to execute each requirement for their two-minute video. Their final product should demonstrate their skills in storytelling, audio, editing, and more. Every year in uh, this skills competition, when they, when they run it, uh, the, the requirement for students are, is to plan, shoot, and edit a short video that could be anywhere from uh, two minutes to two fifteen uh, minutes in length. So the scope for this year is, so we're discussing AI and automation and whether the skill trades are they, is it still important to have a skill trade with AI and automation? So the students will be going out to explore the different skill trades to see whether they can compete with AI and automation. With such a complex topic, students needed to apply all the skills they had been building in preparation for this competition. They would have been teaching themselves neat and interesting ways to approach the filming and polishing their abilities in their chosen editing software. With Nationals on the line, this competition inspired competitors to push their creative boundaries and expand their knowledge in video production. Reporting for MCTV News, Jillian Andrews. And that's it for another episode of MCTV News. Join us again next week where we'll be bringing you pieces on the mainstream thrift shop and the recent grade 9 track meet. As well, we will take a look at something that affects all of students, the stress associated with exam anxiety. All this plus your sports recap and your seven-day weather forecast on the Wednesday, May the 31st episode of MCTV. So are you excited for our new in-studio musical? You know, not a musical, it's the greatest band to ever come out of MCTV. I yeah, mean, it's, well I'm excited for it. I can't wait for the videos that we're going to be able to make. I mean, and the three songs plus maybe a bonus track. Bonus track is just always the best. From all of us at MCTV News, including Julian, Dil, uh, from Jill, Dill, Will, and myself, the mentally ill. Thanks for tuning in.